Good, a Good afternoon. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm excited every time we come together to talk about the magnificent, saving word of the true and the living God. We are back this afternoon in the book of Acts. We've been in the book of Acts now over a year. The Acts of the Apostles. The book, the Acts, it's the proper name, the Acts of the Apostles. Praxis in the Greek, the extraordinary acts of exemplary men and women of God. Acts, the 26th chapter, last week we left you in verse 8. Today we're going to be verse 9 through 19. Acts, the 26th chapter, verses 9 through 19. The subject we're going to derive for this afternoon, and it's going to be coming out of the 15th verse, I am Jesus. We're going to talk about our Lord and Savior tonight. I am Jesus. Ego my Yeshua. I am Jesus. Last week, we left you with Paul talking in front of um, Agrippa. And in the eighth verse, it says, Why shouldn't it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? And here, Paul used uh, the semblance of the resurrection. Brothers and sisters, people in YouTube land that are listening to me right now, uh, a lot of times you may not know as much as the preacher or the pastor or certain Bible teachers know, but stand on the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. People can't refute it. They can talk about it. They can say they, they can dismiss it. They can say, I don't want to understand it. I don't want to know it. But it's still all about Jesus hung on that cross. He died on that cross, was taken and put in a borrowed tomb. But guess what? He got up on the third day morning with all power in his hand. All power in all power in his hand. Then here he ascended to heaven and is sitting now on the right hand side of the Father. Brothers and sisters, stand on the resurrection. There's no other religious figure that has a resurrection. There's no other religious person that can say they were raised from the dead. There's no other religious uh, figure that can say, hey, I am the only begotten Son of God that says in the book of John 10, 30, the Father and I are one. Nobody can say that. Learn to stand on the risen power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be firm with it. Don't just say, well, uh, we believe in the river. No, stand and say, we believe our Lord and Savior died on that cross, was put in a bar tomb, but he got up, he was raised up, and guess what? He might be right now on the right hand of the Father, but guess what? He's coming back again. Ooh, that was the whole message in just a few seconds there. Amen, amen, and amen. Acts, the 26th chapter, verse 9, and we're going to start with verse 9. Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, when he says this, he makes this statement. He's talking about in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, meaning that he did contrary things to the believers of Jesus Christ. He talked about them. He defamed them. He bemused them. He was uh, egotistical towards them. He was critical of them. He was hateful of them. He was something put in prison. He had a murderous spirit about Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, but guess what? Guess what? In a moment, we're going to show how the tables turn on the Apostle Paul. And guess what? Even people today who are saying, I'm not going to believe in God. I don't want to believe in the Bible. I don't want to believe in Jesus. I don't care about the Holy Spirit. I don't care about the Word of God. Well, when the tables turn, when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you and your life, you cannot be the same person. And that's exactly what happens here. Hallelujah. Verse 10. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Isn't that something? He went against 
the scent of Jesus Christ. He went against the believers of Jesus Christ. No matter the race, he went against them according to his own testimony here in front of Agrippa. He received the authority from the chief priest. That means the Kohen Hagadol said, Paul, do what you need to do. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Isn't that evil? Isn't that hateful? Not only did he not care for the cause of Christ, but he went so far to have them in prison. He got authority to even have them killed. That was the type of person Paul of Tarsus, which was his, excuse me, Saul, Shual of Tarsus, was before he became the apostle Paul. Oh, I'm so glad that Saul of Tarsus, Shual of Tarsus, became the apostle Paul. Hallelujah. How did he change? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These, these going up against these saints, these saints doing things against them, these, these saints, hagios, these, these saints, these sanctified people, these servants, these saved ones, these called out ones, these, these saints, he went against them in a very aggressive and mean and hateful way, and then he cast his vote against them. Verse 11, and when I punished them often, every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme and to be exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Now, it says when he went into every synagogue, can you imagine that? Every synagogue in the surrounding area was not safe if you went there and you were a believer in Jesus Christ. That meant Paul had the authority to go into those uh, proceedings and if he found out you were a, a believer, if he found out you were on the way, meaning another word for those who follow Christ, if you, if you, if another name that was a coded, the, the followers of the Nazareth, uh, uh, any name that, 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 that identified you as being a follower of Jesus Christ, he was going to come at you. And he wasn't going to play with you. And I ask this question today, when we're running around on praise dance in these churches and not instead of giving out the word, excuse me for saying that, but, but we're having such a good time in church. But if the tables turn, would you still be ready to go to church and praise dance and have a good time that weekend? If you knew somebody was going to come there that weekend and snatch you up, if you knew someone was going to come in there and bust you in the head, if you knew someone was going to come in there and imprison you, put you on some type of a chain game, if you knew somebody was going to take a chain to you, or leather strap to you, or cattails to you, or kick you, or hurt you, or harm you, and your family, or your children in any way, would you come to church Sunday and still be having yeah, a good time? Stop and really think about that. Because here's the thing, you have people in the world today that are under that type of persecution. You have people in the church that are so busy playing church, playing church like when we were kids and we would play house uh, in our grandparents' house, our uncles and aunts' house, or our parents' home. Uh, we used to play church in the backyard, especially on a good uh, warm Sacramento sun Sunday afternoon. I was the pastor, of course, and my brothers and sisters were the uh, people at church and our friends that would come with us or our cousins that would be there, they would all be church members and we'd just be having the best time playing church on Sunday. But you got people today playing games in the church instead of standing on the death, burial, and resurrection, instead of standing on, the, uh, standing on who Jesus is and making sure people get saved. They're just going to church, going through emotions, talking about people, playing with people, trying to harm people. But if it, if it got real serious, would you change? Would you still stand for Jesus? Or would you scatter? Stop and think about that for a moment. If things ever change in this country, would you still stand for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Every synagogue and compel them to blaspheme, meaning to go in and renounce who they were in Christ and being exceedingly enraged against them. You being angry, curse at them, spit on them, just, just being just awful to them. Could you handle that? I persecuted them to every foreign city. That meant wherever 
outside of Jerusalem, wherever Paul went, he was persecuting followers of Jesus Christ. Verse 12. While this occupied, as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission, listen at the wording, with authority and commission, uh, authority to legally enforce his against all believers of Jesus Christ. He was commissioned from the Kohen Haggadah, right there it says Kohen Haggadah, the chief priest in verse 12, meaning he had a commission that not only could he go and disrupt a synagogue service, not only could he question anybody that they felt were followers of Jesus Christ, not only could they uh, harm these people, not only could they beat these people, but they could also imprison these people and put them in a uh, let them go towards a sham tribe, and in some cases, harm them and allow them to be killed in the frenzy of it all. That's why you gotta be careful of when people get in a frenzy. That's why you gotta be careful when you're in a situation and people love for situations to get out of control so they can take control. Be careful of situations. You listen to me, you young pastors that, that think you know everything, be careful of when people want to be in, in, put you in a frenzy situation. You could end up on the outside of a situation if you're not careful because if people are not saved again and truly born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, they'll do anything to you. Let me say that one more time. If people are not filled with the Holy Ghost, if they're not truly saved, they'll do anything to you. They'll say anything to you. They don't care because if they're not filled with the Holy Ghost, if you're not saved, they just plain don't care. So be very, very careful of situations that could get out of hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was commissioned and had authority to go out and do whatever he needed to do to believers. Verse 13. At midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven. Here in verse 13, we have him with his beginning with his testimony again. Now, Paul, in several places in Acts, go back, goes back to his testimony and his conversion. In Acts, the 22nd chapter, verses 5, uh, the high priest bared me witness and the councils and the elders, and I went to this Damascus to bring in chains, even those who were there in Jerusalem, to be punished. But but then he goes in, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I am, why are you doing this? I am Jesus of Nazareth, who you are persecuting. So Acts the 22nd chapter, verses 5 through uh, the 10th verse, what should I do, Lord? And the Lord said, arise and go to Damascus, and there you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do. Paul goes back to his testimony again. Brothers and sisters, Sometimes there's some great testimonies out there, and sometimes people need to hear. One of, the, one of my tes personal testimonies is when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit got control of who and what I was, I was at Citywide Revival in this town back in 1988, and I had something to do that night. And I was hurrying up, waiting for them to, to, to go on and get through so I could get up and leave. And the pastor that was there, I can remember, it was Cameron Alexander from Atlanta, Georgia. He started preaching and talked about the Holy Ghost. And I was sitting there, and just like I can feel this, the Holy Ghost came over me, and I started crying. And I forgot what I had to go do that night. Because when the Holy Ghost gets control of you, you're a different person. If you're there, can you see people that claim to be so this, that, and the other, and they don't get to seem like they're still are grimy or dirty minded or hateful or don't have the joy of Jesus flowing who they are, their behavior is cankered with wrongness and evilness. Perhaps they haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost. But when the Holy Ghost gets control of who you are, brothers and sisters, you are a different person. You are a demonstratively different person when the Holy Ghost 
gets control of who you are in Christ. And let the Holy Ghost tell you what to say. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to do. And you'll be able to take the authority over every situation in your life. When the Holy Ghost gets control of you. Hallelujah. 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 Verse, uh, going back again to uh, verse 13. Hallelujah. And a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me. Paralenio, paralenio, shining around me. Paralenio and all those who journeyed with me. A light from heaven brighter than the sun. When it came around him, it shined uh, paralenio all around him. Verse 14. And when we had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in the Hebrew language, Shual, Shual, Saul, Saul. Can you, ooh, can you imagine that? Calling him in the Hebrew, Shual, Shual. He wasn't Paul yet. He wasn't the apostle yet. He wasn't the one that was totally sold out to Christ yet. But when Jesus called him, he said, Shual, Shual, why, why are you persecuting me? Is it hard for you to kick against the goals, hallelujah. When we talk about the goals, uh, a farming instrument that was used to uh, spur or put in front of them, in between the oxen to make them go straight, to keep them in line, to keep them if need to be, to move things out of the way for them. You could not kick against these things because they were sharp, pointed instruments and they were hard. You had, it, it couldn't be made out of just little little thin twigs. You had to be made out of sharp, hard wood that could withstand stones, that could withstand the weather, that could withstand the grounds. And you couldn't kick against them. Here, Jesus used this farming analogy to ask Paul, to ask Saul, Shual, Shual, why are you kicking against me? Why are you persecuting me? Why are you kicking against me? the goals. So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, who you are pers persecuting. I am Jesus. One of the construct names of our Lord is ego. I mean, I am. I am what he was kicking against. Jesus is who he was talking about. Jesus Christ, son of the living God. Jesus, our Redeemer. Jesus, our Elder Brother. Jesus, our All and All. Jesus, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah today. Why are you persecuting? Verse 16. But rise and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and all the things which I will yet reveal to you. Verse 17, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. That meant Paul's message, not only at that time was going to be good for the Jews, but for the Gentiles, just like 2,000 years ago, no matter the race, no matter the creed, the message of Jesus Christ is still relevant and prevalent to people today. Let me say that one more time. His message is still relevant and prevalent to people today, no matter the race, creed, or color. Verse 18, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. That's why, brothers and sisters, stand on the power of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. People today need to have their eyes open from the darkness to the light. They need to turn from the darkness and to the light and from the power of Satan to God. That means to run away, to get away from the power of he that was a liar. Satan was a liar according to John 8.44. In fact, Jesus himself said 
He was the father of lies. So my brothers and sisters, keep on pointing people to I am Jesus. Thank God for I am Jesus for receive the forgiveness of sins and the inheritance amongst those who are sanctified by faith in me. That's a big thing to say. Let me say it one more time. Among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So keep on encouraging people to come from the darkness to the light and from the power of Satan to God. Why? Because we serve I am Jesus. Ego a me, Yeshua. Ego a me, Yeshua. I am Jesus. Keep on telling people about Jesus. Keep on pointing people to Jesus. Keep on telling people Jesus is real. Keep on telling people Jesus is the Savior of this world. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.